Hi, I'm John Schimpf. I'm Director of Business Development for the Wireless Business Unit inside Cavium. And, uh, who are you? Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Kenji Blue. I'm in Cavium, uh, Director of Solutions Architecture. And uh, right here you're talking about uh, running m -cord live demonstration. Uh, what do we have in here? There's uh, four blades? Or yes, so we're, what we're showing here is the virtualization of the network core and the baseband unit running on ARM, 64-bit ARM-based uh, Thunder X server blades. Let, let's go over there. You have some uh, slideshow showing more information about, you're talking about M-Cord on ARM, right? So this is, uh, uh, what is, what is M-Cord? M-Cord stands for the Mobile Central Office Rearchitected as Data Center. So does this have to do with virtualizing all the stuff about a server, about, uh, what is it? This particular Cord implementation is about virtualizing the telco network. So the telco cloud servicing customers using a ARM-based architecture. And there's a bunch of uh, companies working together on this, right? That's right. So the companies that are involved with this program include network operators, uh, software companies, uh, silicon companies like Cavium supporting the ARM architecture. It's got to do with NFV, SDN, all that stuff. All that stuff, that's right. So uh, the ability to use general purpose servers to perform all of those network functions. So uh, is it working right now? Does it work on, on a, does it work on the KVM hardware? Absolutely. X Thunder X1? Yeah, we are doing a live demo. And the, uh, the rack of CPU processors, uh, general purpose processors you see are based on the Thunder X1. Uh, uh, and obviously we have announced our second generation as well. Uh, but even the first generation, we have a 96 core on one server blade uh, because each processor has 48 cores and is a two socket uh, configuration. And the Thunder X2, how soon is it coming? Did you say yet? It's coming soon, right? Yeah, it, it's announced, yeah. But you know, we can focus on the current uh, demonstration because yeah. it is very interesting. As you mentioned, it has both NFV, SDN, and there's also mobile multi-access edge computing, which is a very new technology, uh, because as we've seen, there's a lot of devices, uh, there are new mobile technologies, so at the edge of the network, you can do a lot more services, and that's part of our demo as well. So uh, there's a, uh, traditionally, uh, they would have a lot of different things in the, in the server area, what do you call it? The, they would have lots of different things they want to replace with just one KVM rack, or how, how is it going to work? Well, it's not replacing <coughs> things with a caviam rack per se. The, the idea is to have a, a scalable way to do all of the network element processing. And is the case right now is for the usual network operation is to have dedicated appliances. So switches, uh, routers, gateways, all of those pieces of equipment are dedicated to doing their particular function. The idea with this approach is to use general purpose servers running application software being managed by a series of virtualization techniques that allow those applications to come into play or to scale. If the, if the requirements on the user side increase, all you have to do is allocate another server. You don't need to allocate another piece of dedicated hardware equipment. When it, that piece of equipment or that server is no longer needed, it can be dedicated to another use case. So it, it provides a lot of flexibility and helps to reduce the cost and the power consumption within a data center for supporting the telco cloud. And it's important to support uh, peak times. You don't want to have too much stuff you don't use, right? In uh, particular, that is one of the cases that the operators are trying to solve for. So if you're using general purpose servers, again, they can be used for multiple different reasons during the course of a total day, but they're available to support those peak times when dedicated equipment is required. On the down peak portion of that, they're sitting idle, and the expense is still there for all that equipment, but they're not really being used during those times. And this is called the uh, M-Core on ARM, and I guess it also works on Intel. So how, how good does it work on your ARM right now? So basically, with ARM, it provides a much bigger ecosystem. So you know you can customers have a choice of uh, both x86 and ARM servers, uh, and obviously the diversity of hardware is very important uh, because as we get into the edge computing and IoT, 
computing, you could have cases where you need a very low cost uh, server, cases may, maybe you need a mainstream server, uh, and basically it's all about having better choice and better ecosystem for the entire industry. And do you already uh, uh, claim to be better than Intel in terms of cost value and stuff? Yeah, and absolutely. The Thunder X1 is already better? Yeah, Thunder X1 is much better in terms of cost. I mean, you can see uh, some web hosting. Now there, there's a, like a bare metal hosting company where you can see the pricing if you want to rent a VM per hour, uh, there's a cost for the Xeon, a cost for the Thunder X, a cost for the Atom, and you can see that range, and definitely the Thunder X provides a very good uh, value there. The best value, right? Absolutely, the best performance and value combination. And then with Thunder X2, it's going to be even more best, better value. Yes, even. yes. Mm -hmm. And that's coming. So, uh, and then there's all these apps, you t is it, are those apps that runs on this system? Yeah, so this uh, is a, a, a Graphic GUI, in the, a GUI right, basically for the COD um, uh, the project. So the COD project is about, as John mentioned, central office we architected as data center. So in a central office today, there's a lot of legacy appliances, which only does one thing um, that is built for. So with virtualization, uh, we are using ARM servers and running virtualized version of these applications on ARM servers. And in this particular demo, we are running the virtualized uh, base station, the baseband processing, virtualized mobile network. Um, so those are all running on virtual machines, on kernel, uh, on uh, OpenStack as well. Um, and in addition, in addition, we have uh, partner Trend Micro with uh, security services running also as a virtual machine on the same uh, infrastructure. So they're running a, like an antivirus. What are they running? So interesting, um, there are multiple applications in this uh, suite. You know, uh, these applications provide, for example, deep packet inspection uh, for ma malicious attacks and malware. It also does uh, intrusion prevention. It does parental control, uh, also URL filtering. So for example, a uh, parent can block uh, his, his child or her child from watching certain, going to certain websites. Uh, or a company can apply policy, for example, a company uh, can say, you know, if you are uh, working in, you know, and you're using our network, uh, you cannot go to these websites during work hour or something like that, right? So it's a very flexible policy. But uh, at KVM, you have different Thunder X. You have yes. one optimized for one thing, for the other, for the, so you wouldn't buy just a standard one. You would still buy different ones for different use. So there are many kind of different uh, servers or other applications in the, in the industry, right? So from a mainstream server perspective, uh, we have Thunder X as a processor. Um, and it does have a lot of different form factors. You know, a typical 1U rack server, you can have high density uh, OCP versions, uh, telecom OCP versions. So those are all available from our partners, uh, like ODMs and OEMs. Um, and also, uh, we have, uh, with the same technology, we have implemented a smaller version, you know, which we call Oction TX uh, family. So. In our, in our mainstream. Yeah, this one has uh, one of our KMTX uh, processors. It's an industry grade IoT gateway. Yeah. Um, so you can see it's very rugged design. Uh, it's very stable and it is uh, very, very um, um, you know, adaptive to any kind of harsh environment. Uh, so it has a lot of capability of connecting to a lot of devices locally uh, as, a, as an IoT gateway and, and a server. Uh, and it will connect do analysis and connect to the network. And that would be for 5G future, you would have lots of base stations running like stuff like this? Yeah, so this uh, is actually a little bit different from a base station. Um, so with, with this product, basically works with a base station by collect, connecting to a lot of uh, IoT devices. Uh, it can do analysis, protocol conversion of the of this uh, data collected from the devices and then talk to, uh, you know, if it's a wireless, could talk to a base station and get the data up or could, can go through some wired connection and get the data up. Nice. So, yeah, key thing, it, it can do a lot of intelligence analysis locally uh, without having to send all the data up to the cloud. So basically, is it kind of like an app store for the telcos? Or? Absolutely, that's the idea, is that um, you, as, a, as, a, as their customer, you can choose um, different kind of networking applications uh, from different vendors, and it's a bigger ecosystem, more flexibility. And anybody can just add some apps. 
absolutely. And they might be able yeah. to sell them to some Tesco's. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, an interesting thing also is that, um, you know, we talk about both uh, x86 and ARM being a server, basically more choices to the uh, consumers. Um, and in this case, consumer could be service provider, enterprise, etc. cetera. Uh, and they all use the same industry standard platforms, you know, like Linux kernels, uh, OpenStack, uh, KVM, containers. Uh, and also, you know, SDN controllers. These are all industry standard uh, software platforms for virtualization, for NFV. They all run on ARM um, today. And this is very important for everybody who's watching this video because everybody wants to have gigabit LTE, yes. uh, 5G. Mm -hmm. right. Everybody wants to stream 4K yes. videos to their mm -hmm. 4K HDR yeah. phones. Right. They want to upload 4K. They want to do all these things. Yeah. It's impossible if you're not doing what you're doing right now. That's right? right. So basically, you need a lot more hardware, a lot more cost-effective hardware to do all of this and, and also relevant acceleration. Uh, to do the, all this as well. So you're enabling basically a, a better experience for every consumer, uh, like every end user at the end. They're because yeah. mm -hmm. there's a limit how much you can do with a super powerful, uh, what's called power consuming Intel. You need to have more mm -hmm. efficient. A absolutely. I mean, like uh, a lot of these applications, uh, the reason why they are on uh, purpose-built appliances today is because it does need a lot of unique operations. Uh, for example, on an LTE network, uh, between your user device, which could be a cell phone or tablet, to a base station, all the traffic is encrypted by algorithms which are unique to the LTE standard, like Snow 3G, Zook. These are not algorithms that are used other places. And as a general purpose server, you will not get hardware acceleration for these algorithms. But on um, uh, with a choice of more hardware, yeah. then you can have um, a, a, a acceleration based on standard APIs. So the standard software with a diversity of more optimized so uh, hardware, you can get uh, better performance and, and value and lower cost. All right, and uh, uh, so this is uh, happening right now. Is, is there any announcement about how successful the ARM server is thus far? Or are you mostly talking about the future still? Yeah, so ARM servers are being deployed. Uh, as I mentioned, there are web hosting companies. Uh, you can rent uh, cycles based on a dual socket 96 core per play uh, ARM servers. Uh, you know, in a web hosting manner. So it's very cost effective to try uh, and test your software. Uh, there are also, um, in terms of uh, uh, other, other uh, infrastructure, uh, networking devices, um, security devices where ARM um, uh, is used as well. So ARM um, is not just for the handheld, it's been used in the infrastructure uh, in a successful manner. And uh, is everything just working out as it should? Or is it possible that there might be some uh, apps that kind of like don't work yet? to enable, like you said, there was specific requirements for LTE, encryption, all that stuff. Is everything going to work on this kind of system? Yes. Or, and all mm -hmm. the x86 stuff is going to work on ARM? Is already working? Yeah, yeah, most of them are already working. You know, so as I said, the standard platforms, and that's the important first step, right? Because you need a virtualization platform, uh, kernels, OpenStack, uh, SDN controllers. So those are all working. Uh, so the ecosystem can use that to build upon and more and more applications.